This is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to Anarchast, your home for energy on the internet. I'm in the free state, uh, up in New Hampshire, here with Stephanie Murphy. Uh, who lives here. Uh, she's the co-host of Free Talk Live, and she also has her own show called Pork Therapy. And uh, really happy to meet you in person. I've seen you online many times. Me too, Jeff. <laughs> pleasure to meet you, and thanks for having me on the show. Oh, it's my pleasure. And uh, you know exactly the first question, how did you become an anarchist? That's right, yes, because I listened to your show. Um, let's see, so um, is it okay if I give a longish answer? Go as long as you want. Okay. <laughs> it makes it easy for me. I don't have to do anything. I just drink wine and listen to you. That sounds good. <laughs> so. When I was around maybe 12 or 13, I really started to question religion. That was the first social norm that I started to really uh, think about and look at critically, and it didn't make a lot of sense to me. So basically I started looking at atheist websites, and that was like back in the genesis of the internet, back in uh, you know the, the mid-90s, uh -huh. AOL, remember that? Oh yeah, very well. <laughs> You've got mail. You've got mail. <laughs> And, and somehow, um, a lot of these atheist websites that I was finding were leading me to liberty-oriented websites as well. And there weren't that many people who were on the internet at the time. There wasn't a big web presence for, uh, for much, but as you know, a lot of libertarians are tech geeks, and so probably some of them had websites and things like that. So I, don't, I wish I could remember more specifics about which websites I was looking at, but I was definitely finding ideas of liberty, and they, they always sort of made sense to me anyway. And I just thought, well, this is this this is great. This makes sense. Somebody else thinks it's kind of like me. And uh, so then after that, I read some other stuff. Atlas Shrugged, and uh, and um, I also started reading Mises and Lou Rockwell back in sort of like the early 2000s era. And uh, that was really great to learn about Austrian economics and and all kinds of other stuff. But that was more like on the political and economic side. It wasn't until several years later that I started really delving into more um, personal freedom. And so that's one of the main things that I talk about in my work in the media is just how liberty can relate to all different areas of our lives, personal freedom, how we can apply it broadly instead of just sort of the political and economic spheres. Um, so yeah, I started getting into things like Free Domain Radio and Complete Liberty. You've interviewed both of um, Wes and Stefan, and uh, so they had a big influence on me. School Sucks with Brett. Um, and, you know, they've all become friends, which is great. So, um, so yeah, I think that sort of pushed me more of the way along the edge. And I always sort of identified with anarchism as opposed to minarchism, but I did fall into the political trap for, for quite a while. And uh, quickly, you know, I was doing some political activism working on, like, medical marijuana and, and a little bit on Ron Paul around 2008, maybe before. And I just quickly realized it was going nowhere. And, uh, and then I start to look more carefully into, well, what do some of the people say who, who don't participate in politics? And what they were saying made a ton of sense. So basically, that's, that's how I got where I am. That's great. And before you even got into this, did you have any political leanings, or you just never really looked into it too much? Like, were you a, a Republican or a Democrat or anything like that? I sort of bounced all over the place. I was mostly apolitical, but I, I did like the ideas of, about like social justice and, you know, that people should be eated, uh, treated equally, you know, regardless of gender, race, things like that. So that always appealed to me. But on the other hand, I hated taxes. As soon as I got my first job, I, I really just felt very angry whenever I saw my paycheck and there was most of it was gone or a lot of it was gone for taxes. And I did some, I was sort of an, I like to joke that I was an agorist at an early age because I used to do a lot of um, childcare, like babysitting when I was, you know, 11, 12 years old. and older than that so I got my first look at uh, sort of tax-free living with that but then when I got a real job quote-unquote with a W-2 that was uh, a big wake-up call so so yeah I kind of bounced around Okay. and, and then you, uh, sorry go ahead oh sorry um well I guess it's important to say that the way that I got into um, sort of media or got interested in that was because I did fall into the political trap for a while quickly realized it wasn't going anywhere it wasn't for me it wasn't working and it was unlikely, I think, to make any meaningful uh, change in, in the world. Um, but then I thought, well, there's this, this dichotomy where I could either do that or I could sort of get arrested and get thrown into jail like I saw a lot of my friends doing here in New Hampshire. And, and then I, I sort of thought, well, if I do that, how free am I? So I didn't want to do that either. 
So I thought for a long time that there was nothing I could really do and I could have re resigned myself to doing nothing. But, but then the more I thought about it, the more I thought that, hey, it's really important to spread ideas because that's how I came to a lot of important um, conclusions that really changed my life. So maybe I could be one of those people who, who uh, deals in ideas as well. So that's kind of how I got, uh, got to the media aspect of things. And are you from New Hampshire originally, or did you move here at some point? No, I moved here in 2006, and uh, it's fitting that we're at the Porcupine Freedom Festival because I moved uh, to New Hampshire from Massachusetts, not that far away, not a far <laughs> to participate in the Free State Project. Oh, okay. So yep. it existed back then. When did it start? It did. Do you know? Yeah, um, it, I think it's been around since the early 2000s, but the state of New Hampshire was chosen in 2003 by some kind of a vote. Uh, <laughs> anarchist, anarchist voting, voting. yeah, <laughs> um, among the Free State Project signers at that point. And basically what it is for anyone who's not aware is a, an agreement among uh, at least 20,000 individuals that they will all move to a state, and in this case it's New Hampshire, um, to create, you know, to get active for liberty if everybody else pledges to as well. So, and did all those people move here? Do you have any idea the amount or numbers? It, it hasn't reached um, 20,000 signers yet. We're at around 12,000 right now. 12,000? So, so 12,000 people, it's not completely crazy. 12,000 people have pledged to do this, um, if others will as well. But uh, certain people like me didn't want to wait to move, so I moved right away. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, um, I like living in New Hampshire. It's definitely a noticeable difference over Massachusetts. Um, in Massachusetts, you can really feel the state. And you can hear to a certain extent, but it's, it's much less, you know. And uh, you only have so many options in the world, and I know we're all in search of freedom, and we all sort of find a place that matches our values best and, and live the way that, uh, that we think is the most free. Um, but for me, it was really easy to move here, really convenient time in my life. I was just coming out of undergraduate, and so I moved to New Hampshire, and um, I was very happy with it. I, immediately, I felt, uh, I felt freer. Not completely free, of course, but but better, an improvement. And honestly, the biggest thing that I've gotten out of living here is just that I've met um, a lot of wonderful people. You know, not everybody in the Free State Project, as I've said before, is my best friend or anything like that. And that's fine, because you can't expect to be a thousand people and have them all uh, be best friends with one another, but, but definitely the best friends that I have, I've met through the Free State Project. And you can meet people here that you wouldn't be able to meet anywhere else and have them uh, as your neighbors. So I, I like it. That's great. And do you spend most of your time doing the sort of the media stuff on your uh, radio shows? And uh, I'm also a graduate student, so I, I hope to be finishing that up pretty soon. What but, are you taking? Uh, a PhD in biochemistry right now. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'd like to be, uh, I'd like to have a little bit more freedom to pursue different avenues in, in my work life. So, so hopefully soon that'll be wrapping up. And um, yeah, I, I keep busy. I do also volunteer with uh, Free Aid, which is here at Porkfest. Free Aid is um, uh, basically a, a group that provides volunteer first aid at festivals like this. And, you know, it, just in our daily lives, we're just kind of volunteers. If somebody needs a Band-Aid or if they need uh, help, sprained ankle, something like that, you, you can't always rely on hospitals or the state to, uh, to save you or help you out in those cases. So we try to help our neighbors out. And we're showing how uh, things like healthcare and things like uh, first aid or just help, mutual aid, that kind of thing, can be provided on a voluntary basis. That's great. So there's a little bit of a, you know, ideological motivation behind it too. That's fantastic. And um, is there anything else you'd like to say about New Hampshire or Porkfest? Anything in particular on your mind? I'm curious how you're enjoying Porkfest. I wonder if you've been asked this before. Uh, not on camera, but okay. uh, I've only been here about two days. It's definitely interesting. It's, you know, it looks, it's a lot of fun, a lot of uh, interesting people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a camper, so that part of it is not really jive with me, but uh, <laughs> we're in a big campground right now. And uh, yeah. other than that, no, it's great. I, I really support any freedom movement anywhere on earth. And if anyone is trying to do anything freedom related, I try to at least go there. Mm -hmm. So at least I can have an opinion or, a, you know, I, I hate people who talk about things they've never been to, you know, <laughs> or like Barack Obama wants to bomb Iran. He's never even been there. Like if, if you're going to bomb a place, go there at least once, right? <laughs> and I, uh, I have no attention. You probably to wouldn't want to bomb it if you went there. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Because yeah. there are people. Idiots. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so I always try to see firsthand experience. You know, you, you can hear things from people, and it'll, but it'll never be the same as your experience going there. We all have our own uh, unique experiences. And yes, I've had a good time. It's been very interesting. Um, 
very interesting group of people here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, you find a very, you know, even though these are all people who share certain values about liberty and, and stuff like that, you're going to find a very diverse group of interests, a very, very diverse group of individuals. So it's, it's very interesting to me to talk to different people and find out what they're into and, and sort of what their ideas are. And, you know, we can all be made better off. It's sort of this exchange of ideas, I guess. Totally. Yeah, we were playing poker last night. I think one of the representatives of New Hampshire was playing with us. <laughs> yeah. And we were all smoking weed and drinking. <laughs> he, he was fine. And that's great. So there is some hope here for some freedom. Uh, do you think, uh, do you, have you seen changes since you've been here, 2006? Is it getting better or, or what's your opinion on the progress? It, in, in some cases, I think it gets better. It gets worse before it gets better because they know that you're sort of challenging them. And so, for instance, in Keene, like a lot of the courtroom activism uh, has resulted in, in, in crackdowns. But on the other hand, uh, they're like really getting the message out there. I mean, people know, uh, at least in Keene and in other places in New Hampshire, people know about Free Keene, they know about the Free State Project. Um, they, they at least have some clue that it's about liberty, you know, and that it's about wanting to leave people to make their own choices instead of having someone else do it for them. So I think there is um, sort of, the memes are spreading, we're at that stage, and there is some sort of active challenging uh, going on my personal style is not to engage in the confrontational type of activism. Um, and on that front, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I honestly am sort of agnostic on, on how that will affect people's freedom in their daily lives. Uh, I don't think that politics can create meaningful change, as I said before. Um, and there have been some small things that they point to that, that have been victories on the political front, but it, it hasn't affected my life too much, as far as I can tell. Um, so. I do think, to answer your question, this is kind of, try not to go around about too much, but I do think that um, New Hampshire already was free when I moved here, and personally, my life has become a lot freer because there are people around me who get it, you know, and who, who share those same ideas. On the political front, or on the daily life front, I guess, maybe uh, I'd still like to see it push forward a little bit more, but that's, that's why I'm here. Great. And uh, why don't you tell people where they can find more information on you on Free Talk Live or on your radio show? Absolutely. So, um, well, first of all, if you're here at Pork Fest or if you come to a, a future Pork Fest, you can visit Free Aid at our tent. It's up in the Agora Valley. You can also visit us online. FR33aid.com is our website. And we do mutual aid and volunteer first aid. Also CPR education. Um, uh, my two radio shows, I'm a host of Free Talk Live. You can hear me on Sunday nights. And uh, the website for that is freetalklive.com. They give away all their archives for free, so you can hear any of their shows. You, uh, you will only hear me on Sundays, however. And then uh, my own show is Pork Therapy. It's Pork Like a Porcupine, P-O-R-C Therapy.com. I also have a weekly show, and I give out all of my archives for free as well. So, Jeff, thanks so much for oh, having well, me thank on. Thank you. Thank this you very has much, been great. Stephanie. And uh, so that's it for today uh, from Pork Fest in New Hampshire. We're going to have many more videos coming up after this one. Uh, there's a lot of anarchists here, so we're going to have lots of good videos. And I uh, thank uh, Stephanie Murphy for uh, spending some time with us. And that's all for today. Peace, love, peace, and anarchy.